Alright guys, so I thought I'd give you a little insight on some of the more advanced ways of controlling Cubase, something that goes a little bit further past regular key commands or even macros. As you know, you can assign key commands to various functions in Cubase. You can then chain those and create macros and then execute those with a single shortcut. However, not everything inside Cubase can be assigned a shortcut. So, uh, for instance, if you're working with audio, you may be, or if you're working creatively with audio, you may be finding yourself transposing it up and down quite often. And uh, currently there's no key command to do that. So you have to literally scroll to uh, the info line and uh, maybe use your mouse wheel to transpose audio up and down. So that's one of the things I created a custom macro in a program called AutoHotKey under Windows. What that does is it's a programming language that allows you to automate different tasks in Windows. So basically what I use that to, in this case, is to position the mouse cursor here and perform a mouse wheel up or mouse wheel down and assign those to actual key commands. So in my case, I'm using the control and arrow up to transpose up, like so, and control down to transpose down. So if I'm working with audio, and I quickly want to transpose things up and down, I can do that with a keyboard. And in fact, I, I much prefer that to working with the mouse so because I can be so much faster. So that's one of the things I programmed in auto hotkey. Another thing that I'm using is a software called Radial Menu. And it's actually a program written within this auto hotkey. And what that does is it simply creates context-based menus for various software. You need to program that itself. You need to populate it with what should appear in those menus. So here, for instance, I'm pressing F1, which is my hotkey to bring this up. And uh, it's sensitive to Cubase, so it only works if I'm in Cubase and Cubase is the active window, I press F1. And I've populated all these menu entries with things that are possibly only relevant to to me and my way of working but you know maybe you can you can find some inspiration in that for yourself as well it took quite a long time i'm not a programmer myself so it took quite a few days to get this all up and running um the way it works is uh it uses a protocol a layer of keybase called generic remote which allows you to basically set up a midi input and uh, let Cubase accept MIDI commands, uh, whether it be from your MIDI keyboard or a virtual MIDI device, which is what I'm using in my case, and it accepts MIDI messages and then in turn turns them into specific commands within Cubase. So I found this free MIDI virtual layer that you install in Windows uh, called Loop MIDI. Anyway, I'm using this generic remote layer to accept these MIDI messages and then in turn I program this radial menu software to send out MIDI messages that Cubase is sensitive to. And I'm using a sort of like a super quick context menu, you know, you can, you have this typical Cubase context menu when you press the right mouse button, but you know, here I basically populated it with uh, with options that uh, I find myself using very often. So I may want to bring up the project logical editor really quickly for instance, but uh, what I'm using it the most actually is organizing my project and I'm going to show you just now what I mean by that. So I've sort of created a, a dummy project here. Let's say this is my drum track. This will be my bass track. Um, this is a uh, sound effects and here's a vocal track. So as you may know, Keybase 7 or 7.5, which is what I'm running here, has these what they call visibility agents, uh, which allows you to temporarily hide certain tracks. Where this feature really becomes powerful is when you program your own project logical editor scripts and use that in conjunction with uh, the visibility agents. Now I try to take it one step further and actually integrate it into my radial menu. And what I mean by that is, um, as I mentioned previously, let's suppose this is my drum track. So I'm going to clear the track name and I'm going to name it drums. And as you can see, not only did it change the track name to 
this name which I'm using in my projects has also changed its color. Let's say, like I said, this is my bass track, so I'm going to name it bass. See, it prepended the BSS string in front of what that channel was called, and it called it red, which is what I'm usually coloring my bass tracks. Let's name this one sound effects, and uh, this is the vocal track, so I'm gonna call it vocals. Now, apart from graphically structuring your project, I'm using it to quickly uh, only display the types of tracks I want to work with. So let's say I only want to see the vocal tracks, so I'm gonna choose this menu entry, and there you go, I only see my vocal track. I'm gonna press my key command for visibility undo, so I'm back where I started at. And let's say I only want to work on my uh, my bass tracks, so there you go, there's my bass track. And so on and so forth, as you can see. This is really quick, really, really powerful, and especially with large sessions, if you're scoring to picture, you've got loads of tracks, this can be super helpful. Let's move on. Right, I'm using the macros for a variety of things. Uh, one of them is to quickly select parts that you like. Let's say you're auditioning a vocal take. You're just going through the track and you're trying to identify which parts you like. So let's say you like this part. So I have a macro set up that will quickly color with a press of a button color the part yellow and as you can see it prepended this string sel as in selected and let's say i finish going through this take and let's say i like this one as well now i deselect everything and i quickly want to select those bits that i liked so again i turn to my trusty old friend radial menu to which i programmed a menu entry selected events and instantly it selects those good bits, those selected bits for me. Now I can do a variety of things with them. Uh, let's say I copy them into the clipboard and I paste them here and I use yet another of my macros to bring the events together. And there I have my two selected events. Really powerful again. One rather substantial gripe I have with Cubase is that it currently does not have a separate key command to toggle snapping on and another key command to uh, to turn snapping off it only has one key command that toggles snap by default this key command is the letter j so you would press j and as you can see the snap on button turned on and you press it again and it's off but when you're deep into editing something you may not know whether your snap is currently on and off um, the latest version of cubase tried to remedy that with introducing the control modifier to temporarily disable snapping but i still don't think that's ideal so what i did is actually i turned to auto hotkey again and i somehow managed to program a macro that scans the color of the pixels here and from that determines whether the snap is currently on or off and uh, that way i can have a separate key command for snap on and then another key command for snap off so i can always be sure that my snap is either on or off i don't have to you know um focus on this part of the screen i don't have to look up with with my eyes to see whether my snap is on so uh, here's my key command for snap on i press it once and the snap is on i press it twice nothing happens that's the way it's designed now i use my second key command for snapping off and it's off i press it again again nothing happens it does not toggle it stays off if i press again the key command for snap on it's on again again super super handy for me anyway Another extremely useful macro that I programmed in AutoHotKey is a function to quickly navigate in the timeline. By default in Cubase, if you want to navigate within the timeline, you have to scroll up here to move where your project cursor is. Now what I did is I actually programmed a macro that instantly moves your mouse cursor up here and clicks. That means that I can actually you know, when I'm sort of quote unquote in the zone editing something right here. Let's say I want to quickly move the project cursor from where it is, bar number 10, here. Normally I would have to scroll up and click here. Now with my function, I can just stay here and just use my key command for quickly locating in the timeline. As you can see, 
I can keep wherever I am with my mouse cursor and still navigate wherever I want in the timeline. Right, let's see what else is there. I use this one um, project logical editor macro to quickly color adjacent events for basically just better orientation, visual feedback. So I'll have one key command to color four consecutive events, different colors, like so. Let me just show you one more auto hotkey and macro that I use in conjunction with Keybase. It's still in sort of an experimental stage and it's sort of a, a fun kind of thing that's not really meant as seriously and I haven't found much practical use for it. I just did it to see if I can actually pull it off. What it does is it reshuffles uh, an X amount of adjacent events. I guess it's easier to see than to explain, so let me just show you. Let's say I'm gonna want it to work on five adjacent events and reshuffle them on the track below in a random order. That's basically it. It was all working on its own here. It was not me manually rearranging those audio events. That's about it for now. I mean, I hope it gives you some ideas for what can be done with Keybase if you dig deep into it and if you actually use external programs to work with it because, like I said, Keybase does not have a key command to control everything. It's actually quite limited and its macro system is buggy and it's been buggy for years and uh, Steinberg does not seem to pay attention to that. So you have to find your own ways around that. Uh, if you have any questions or ideas of your own on how to streamline the workflow in Keybase, or if you yourself use similar techniques, um, I'll be super excited to, to hear about them. And that's it for now.